Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com, the premier dealership for Piaggio and Vespa products here in San Diego, California. So today I'm going to do another review on the Liberty 150 and why I think it's the best value there is in new scootering history. The Piaggio Liberty 150 was introduced to the US market a couple years ago. You could see my prior review on the scooter. I just wanted to do a new review because now I've had some time on the seat. I did a little trip down to Mexico with the guys that own Vespa Portland. And instead of taking a Vespa like I normally would, I took the Piaggio Liberty and said, let's see how it does. I hopped on the freeway and I did a lot of other fun stuff with the scooter and tested out on some rough roads. But first of all, I want to go over why I think it's the best value. The price on this scooter is $29.99. Uh, compared to the Honda PCX and the Yamaha S-Max, that's several hundred dollars less. I think those scooters are about $700 MSRP over this scooter. And I can tell you, I've ridden a PCX quite a long distance. The seat was horrendous on it. For somebody that's just a standard height, it kind of has this weird hump, really pushes you forward. It does have a pretty unique riding posture, which is kind of a low, lower, lower, um, not necessarily seat height, but kind of like a more recliner style to it. Also with the Yamaha S-Max. Uh, but the price, I don't know if you could justify spending the extra money for the Yamaha or Honda product when you have the Piaggio at several hundred dollars less with pretty much the same performance. So I'll go over some of the basic specs. Seat wise, it's not the lowest in its class, about 31 inches high. I fit very comfortably on the scooter, much much more comfortable than I would say a Vespa GTS for the seating position for somebody my stature, about 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, um, the position on the floorboards is great. It's a little more cramped compared to the Vespas, but by no means uncomfortable. It does have the nice flat floorboard, which I think is a feature versus uh, the Honda PCX and the Yamaha that have the huge hump where you're kind of like locked into the scooter. You'll find that the flat floorboard comes in quite handy. Um, if you have a bag with you know, a grocery bag in the center, it will easily hang in there. So that's added value in your storage. Uh, along with, I've gone as crazy as I brought a bag of like aquarium gravel on a scooter with a flat floorboard like this. Uh, something to keep in mind, a lot of people don't ever look at that, but I've always have enjoyed scooters with flat floorboards. Something Vespas have never had, they always have the tunnel, so it's almost flat, but a little tunnel, or you have things like the Honda PCX and the Yamaha T-Max that have like kind of more of the motorcycle look to it. Maybe you like that look, um, maybe that's for you. Also with the lower uh, floorboard, you know, they have a very low floorboard on this because they moved the gas tank to the rear of the scooter. Uh, top speed wise, has the same tried and true three valve engine, fuel injected engine that's found in the Vespa Primavera in Sprint 150. It's been a great engine. Uh, these scooters have very few problems uh, while they're covered under the two year warranty, which is pretty much class leading for this, this price point of scooter, two year warranty from the factory. Um, does about 70 miles per hour is about the top speed. I've hopped on the interstate. You definitely don't want to get in the fast lane, uh, but it will comfortably stay on the right lanes of a U.S. interstate. And I wouldn't consider riding cross country with it, although it is possible, but they do very nice on the highway. Much better than the Primavera and Sprint, in my opinion, with the taller wheels and this is a little bit lighter than a Vespa and definitely more aerodynamic. Let me go over all the features with this scooter, starting from the front and moving on to the back. So starting out in the front, the big feature of this class of scooter has got the larger wheel on it. Uh, the definite plus of a larger wheel is it's going to roll over a pothole or over a bump much better. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to be, you're going to be off-roading all day with it, but just going to be a more stable scooter. You have a larger wheel, uh, more gyroscopic force, so it's going to want to stay straight and with more stability compared to a Vespa with a 10, 11, or 12-inch wheel. 
Uh, the benefit of the smaller wheels, hindsight, is they have more of a squirrely feel. In many instances, that's better actually. Like where you wanna um, make a quick little maneuver, the Vespa is gonna shine at that with the smaller wheels. I'll admit that. But overall for a commuter, I prefer the larger wheels. You may love or hate the look of the larger wheels, but they're kind of the mainstay in this class of scooter. You know, ranging from the Liberty 150, the Liberty 50, or up to the bigger uh, BV or Beverly 350. And other scooters have copied or have similar designs as well. So in the front, you got a quite a powerful disc brake. The brake pads last forever on these. They have the same size pads as you find on the Vespa GTS. Uh, I don't think I've ever replaced them. We replaced tires before on the front. It's got electronic anti-lock brakes on the front wheel, which is a nice safety feature if you need to do a panic stop. The back wheel does not have ABS brakes, but it's got a mechanical drum, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's very low maintenance. You don't have brake fluid to change on the rear. Uh, it does have a mechanical cable that you need to adjust. So that's one, I don't know, I guess it's a very, very slight down point of the Vespa and the Piaggio 150s, but I wouldn't call it inadequate by any means. Moving on to the leg shield. The fit and finish on the Liberty is just top notch. You know, it's above any other scooter in this class. Out of all the scooters I've seen, I've seen a lot of brands of scooters. Uh, it's got LED running lights. In the European markets, these are they have an incandescent turn signal. It looks really, really cool. It is possible to wire that. We do not make a kit to wire that, but it, if you buy it from us, we could certainly uh, modify these to be the turn signal. Moving on up, it's got a 55 watt uh, halogen headlight. Compared to the latest uh, Honda PCX, they do have LED lighting, which is, I kind of like, but is it worth 700 bucks more to get LED lighting on a scooter? You could put a LED retrofit, but even riding this at night, I found no problem with the headlight. It works better than a lot of other headlights of this size. It actually works better than the BV350 headlight. I'll admit that. And that's mostly what I ride is a BV350 when it comes to commuting and going long distance. As for the instrumentation, it's got a basic instru instrumentation, same carryover uh, display as the Primavera Sprint, anti-lock brakes, low oil pressure, high beam, low beam, low fuel. And I'll talk about the fuel a little bit later. A trip odometer, odometer, fuel gauge, and a clock. So just the basic, easy to read instrumentation. The backlight's really nice at night, but I'm shooting this on a beautiful spring day, so um, very easy to read. Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes it's cool to have the digital latest fancy techy stuff, but come on, it's just a basic scooter. Uh, this is robust, not likely to get burned out in the sun if you're gonna end up have to park this outside. Just the basic mechanical, um, speedometer nice and easy to read moving on to the controls you got front brake hydraulic front brake the abs mechanical rear brake both have quite good feel to them they they have uh very high quality uh brake lines on all the piaggio and vespa scooters regardless of what if it's a 50 all the way up to the high-end scooters you know the ten thousand dollar um 946 they all have They've always had really nice brakes on them, nice and strong, more than adequate for the typical performance you use a scooter. Uh, turn signals are the basic push to cancel. It does have a single indicator that tells you your turn signals are on. No audible feedback. High beam, low beam, it does have a passing light so you can flash somebody. High beam, low beam. <laughs> basic horn. This is an electronic seat pop, which is a nice handy feature found on the 150. Uh, and I'll show you further how that works. You got the emergency kill switch. I just recommend leaving it in the run. You got to pull one, uh, one or the other brakes and then it will come right to live with the start button. Fuel injected, like I suggested earlier, I would, not, I would just not recommend getting a carbureted scooter with the current fuel that they sell in North America that has 15% ethanol. Just not compatible with carburetors. I know lots of old scooters, they just need lots of maintenance to keep a carbureted scooter up. Fuel injection is the way to go. It's super reliable, especially on this model. I've never seen any issues at all. We've never done any warranty issues out of all the scooters we sold here in San Diego on anything to do with the fuel injection. I have a lot of people like, 
I like the old carburetor. You know, I can get in there and tweak it. Well, guess what? You're probably gonna mess it up if you take it apart. So that's just the way it really goes. Uh, fuel injection is gonna give you a very good service over the life of the scooter. Moving a little bit lower, just like the Vespa, it's got the, the bag hook. You'll find that will be a very handy feature if you wanna put um, a grocery bag or a purse or whatever, uh, any type of bag. Uh, another thing I like to do is putting the ball caps on there. I'm always wearing a ball cap cover up my long hair that I can't um, tr trim in the month of April 2020 because everybody knows what's going on. Um, so I've always liked that. That's what I do. I did lose one ball cap on a very windy day. But as for the key positions, just like the Vespas, it's going to have a, a four position key. If you have the handlebars turned to the far left, you can turn the key and lock the whole system down. So you have the handlebars locked, the glove box is locked and won't open, and the seat won't open. So the scooter's completely locked down and safe, short of somebody wanting to pick it up and throw it in a truck. Easy to lock the scooter down further. You could put something like a grip lock. You can find our website called the, um, the Grip Lock, made out of Australia. A very good visual deterrent. It locks up your brake. Alternatively, they have very large spokes on the wheel, so really easy to put a um, a big chain through if you had to really lock it down. Not really an issue in San Diego, don't really see too much uh, scooter theft. Then you move it to the, the closed position, you unlock it, move it one more position, you can push the key and unlock the glove box. In the glove box, it's got two little storage compartments for your a mobile phone, a wallet, change, whatever you want hidden a little lower down here, not really necessary to ever really use unless you've got a dead battery. That's the seat pop for the bat manual seat pop for the battery. Glove box works really good. You can be riding, say you had to pay a toll or whatever. Like when I used it last, I went through the border. You know, you got, got, got your wallet in there, pull it out. I got to pull out a special ID to cross the border here, you know, going from Mexico to the U.S. A lot easier than fumbling with um, that kind of stuff out of your pocket when you're at a checkpoint, for instance, and that kind of thing. It's all sealed up. It's got a rubber gasket, keeps the water out. And then, of course, the last position's on, which you leave it when you're running. I already talked about the low uh, floorboard height and how I like that quite a bit. Uh, seat height is great on the scooter. There's an optional side stand available for a scooter. It does have an electronic uh, interlock switch, so you can't start the scooter when the side stand's down safety feature essentially but moving on to the saddle it's more the traditional upright scooter which i love that's why i like vespas they're just kind of the upright seating posture versus something like a pcx or the honda reflex where you're kind of sitting in it like a couch or or the far extreme which is a helix where it's very much like a couch which i actually like that for what it is and what it stands for in the 80s but we're not talking about that scooter today um, for something this size, I prefer an upright scooter. So you push the electronic seat, seat pop, opens right up. It's got a nice generous size under seat bay. Uh, and this back compartment is your battery. It's got a toolkit and something that most scooters don't have. Everything you need, if you need to change a battery, even take the spark plug out, a couple basic wrenches, uh, adjustment tool for the uh, adjustable rear shock. You know, it's a preload on the rear shock, so if you're a heavier rider, you can crank up the preload or ride two up frequently. It may be worthwhile doing that. And there's also a, a tie to secure that up in the um, up on the top of the seat. The seat bay is quite waterproof. I mean, I won't go through a river crossing that's really, really deep and expect it to be uh, water resistant. But I could show you a video a little later. This. Uh, stay tuned for the last part of this video where I'll show you something special I do on this scooter. Uh, up here, there's two hooks for your helmet. So if you don't fit your helmet underneath the seat, say you have a bag of groceries under here, you could hook the D-ring right onto this and secure your helmet. Uh, the last thing I wanna talk about is the gas. It's nice and handy that it's underneath the seat right here. And it does have a little catch tray right underneath it, a little rubber catch tray that does have a drain tube that leads away from the muffler if you do overfill the gas tank. Two pitfalls of the scooter. You know, it's, as much as I love Piaggio and Vespa products, it's not always peaches and cream. 
Uh, the, the fuel tank capacity is just over a gallon and a half on this scooter. So what, what does that get you ri riding distance wise? It gets you just over 100 miles. Um, in my experience, riding it down to Mexico on a very long ride, and granted, I was riding at higher speed, so I probably used a higher amount of fuel. Typically, scooters get better fuel economy when they're in stop and go slow traffic versus riding them on long distance high speed. Very, very much different compared to a car, but that's just the way they work. And it's what I would get, I would get about 75 miles before the low fuel light would come on. Well, I go to the gas station, right when the low fuel light comes on or shortly after 10 miles in or something, I'd be able to add one gallon to the fuel tank to get another 75 miles range. So what that indicates to me is the reserve, once the fuel light comes on, is you have about a half gallon remaining. So essentially another 40 to 50 miles of riding once the light comes on. So you can keep that in mind, that's your total range. I'd say you could safely do 100 miles of range on the fuel tank, which isn't quite class leading when it comes to this size scooter. Many other scooters have about a two gallon capacity and similar fuel economy to that. The fuel economy is great on a scooter. I would say it's anywhere from 60 to 75 miles a gallon. 60 being you're right on the, the highway, wide open throttle. 75, maybe 80, 90 if you're really riding it slow. Uh, the, the mileage ranges greatly on scooters, unlike a car. So just keep that in mind. Also a little difficult to fill up uh, the last little bit you got to fill it all the way up to there's a little uh, notch inside the filler neck and it's a little little hard to top it off at the vast, last little bit if you're trying to, to get the most range. But typically, I just fill until the, uh, the pump clicks off and then stop, but you're not going to have a completely full tank on this model. Moving on to the back uh, grab handle, seat la latches and locks. Uh, it's a nice grab handle, nice and big. It's made out of like a, a fiberglass reinforced nylon plastic. It's very durable and strong. There is an adapter plate. The either uh, the put a top case. You can both go both get a color match factory top case, or you can put a less exp expensive option from Shad or Givi. High quality top cases. So if you're looking for more storage, that's the way to go. Moving on down, for the American market, they got these extra ear turn signals does have an LED tail light on it that's very bright and they work very good um, and the tail lights once you start the scooter it comes right on uh, it got a license plate light like they always do uh, mechanical drum brake for the rear like I su suggested nothing wrong with that very very low maintenance lasts quite a long time don't need to service it all that frequently same brake shoes as the Vespa, so they're very readily available. One thing I like about this architecture, it has a very stout mount, just like the Vespa GTS or any of the higher end scooters. So they support the wheel axle from both the left and right side, unlike most Vespas or of this size, the 150s. Uh, so what that gets you is gets you a little bit more rigid, you know, more of a rigid um, chassis and engine mounting a little bit less vibrations and obviously a lot better mounting of the muffler. Uh, pretty easy to remove when it does come time to do a tire. The one thing about these tires, they last forever. That is a plus of the larger size tires versus the Vespa smaller size tire. This might not be the beauty on the block, but as for um, the cost to keep it going, it's gonna be a lot less than a Vespa having these larger wheels that last quite a long time and are priced similar to the Vespa. If you're a passenger, or even if you're a rider on a long, long ride, it does have retractable uh, aluminum footrests. Pretty comfortable back here. You know, even if you're a little bit larger passenger for a smaller scooter, this is a very secure feeling ride. You know, you have the grab handle. And obviously the rider's got plenty of space with somebody like me on the back or, or whatever. Uh, take your, your uh, spouse, whoever on the back, friend, I don't care. Uh, but most, most parts of the world, people ride two up quite frequently on scooters to really utilize the, the superior uh, traffic and parking handling of a scooter. When you first buy it brand new, as most scooters, there's a break-in service. Uh, a little expensive on the first service because they do want the valves 
inspected and adjusted if needed. So right around 625 miles, 1,000 kilometers do for service. 3,000 miles can be an inspection, but I always recommend doing oil change. It's only one liter of oil. Same procedures changing the oil on a Primavera Sprint. You can find videos on how to do that or bring it to our uh, service department and have it done by uh, certified techs that do this every single day and we'll do a quality job. At about 6,000 miles, 10,000 kilometers, that's when a major service comes up. And then thereafter, you know, 12,000 miles, 18,000, 24,000, and so on. But I don't see why the scooter wouldn't give you a nice long life, even if you're using it in a pretty extreme duty, like riding like 100 miles a day or something like that. I could see it holding up very well. So how does this compare to the competition? Like I suggested, I love the sea heist. The number one thing I like about it is that price point, $29.99. If you go to PiaggioUSA.com, you can see the current color range. There's also one additional model of the Liberty that has an S on it. The only thing different about it is the appearance package. They usually have nicer looking wheels and a, a sportier appearance. It's the Liberty 150S, and it goes for $100 oh, premium over the standard Liberty. This one's kind of a special edition. You may love or hate it. It does have the tan uh, inset, same $29.99 price point. But when you compare it to the only competition out there that I even consider competition would be the, the PCX and the T-Max. I'm not even count the like. Like 150 from Kimco. Uh, forget that sim garbage. This stuff's all garbage now. That's my opinion. If you have a sim, I'm not trying to offend you, but everything out of that company, Lance and Sim, uh, they tried to court us to be a dealer, and we said, no, thank you. I'll just get right to the point with that stuff. And I check out scooters with a, like a hawk. You know, I'm just, everything scooters, I'm always all about it. And I am kind of biased towards Hondas and Yamahas. In my own personal motorcycle collection, I have Hondas and Yamahas. I've had lots of the old Honda and Yamaha scooters. Um, I do like that stuff, but of course, I'm very biased towards Vespa and Piaggio. So keep that in mind when watching my video. I do love that stuff. But like I said, suggested the price point, a 2020 Honda PCX is about six, I think it's 600 or $700 over this. If you go to the T-Max, which I will say has one really cool feature. It does have a keyless, uh, entry fob, which is something I wish Piaggio and Vespa would take on. I care less about having little LCDs that have cutesy little things on it, but give me a keyless fob. That is truly a convenient feature. If you have a modern car, it's just like, how, how are you dealing with a key before that? And then, as with scooters, where you're still dealing with a key. But is that worth seven, eight hundred dollars more? Up to you. Uh, for this price point of a scooter, that's a substantial amount more. The last scooter I wanted to chime in on, it's not even out yet. Very, very cool scooter. That's in the same class. Do you have any guesses on what it is if you're paying attention to scooters? It's a Honda ADV 150. Here's my thoughts on that scooter. That scooter is $1,300 more than this scooter. That's quite a bit more than this scooter. Pretty much very similar specs. Pretty much the same specs as the Honda PCX, except for with a taller seat height, uh, in my opinion, much better looks than the PCX. I, I like how it looks. It's a pretty awesome looking scooter. Um, but when it comes to riding it off-road, guess what that thing is? That thing is a sheep in wolf's clothes. Check out this next video I'm gonna put up. Speaking of off-road riding. But down in Mexico, we did a ride. And we did about 20 miles of dirt roads. But that was one fun part that Andy from Vespa Portland caught on his GoPro me riding the Liberty through it, a water crossing. It performed perfect through that. I had to ride some other people's scooters through some of the real difficult sections. If you watch my prior videos, I'm a big off-road nut. I like riding mountain bikes. I got a big collection of off-road motorcycles, something I've just always had a, a big passion for, just like Vespas and in general. But this scooter, compared to the Honda ADV, I'm certain they would perform identical off-road. The Honda ADV 150, come on, that thing is not a dirt bike. Much like most adventure bikes, large adventure bikes, they are not dirt bikes. You know, I told people when I owned my BMW F800GS, which is, I think, a pretty uh, excellent 
all around adventure bike. You could tour with it and it also has pretty decent capabilities off-road. I tell people I could go anywhere a minivan could go. Although I did take, I took it through some pretty extreme stuff, but um, but a lot of people just like, I don't know, they, more people are in it for the looks of the ADV look, the adventure look. And that's my thoughts on it. It's enough about the uh, ADV 150, I'm pretty anxious to see it, but this is so much better of a value. And I'm certain it has the same capabilities as that scooter. Hope you found it interesting. Um, until next time, follow our YouTube channel. I got well over 500 videos, mostly about modern Vespas and vintage Vespas. Uh, hope that helps make a decision. If you're interested in this scooter, feel free to check out our dealership website, vespamotorsport.com, and book an appointment to take one for a test ride as long as you have a motorcycle license. We always got a demo um, Liberty on hand and take, take it on a good test ride and witness it for yourself why it's a superior scooter over many other scooters in this price point. Why would you buy a used scooter 1500 bucks when you can finance something like that? It's current ASR, uh, MSRP of $29.99 plus dealer fees. You're at a monthly payment with the current interest rates of April 2020, well under 100 bucks a month. Um, not much. To, to have ownership of a brand new scooter with a two-year warranty. There's a lot to be said about that. So this is Robi here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. Also check out our website, ScooterWest.com. If you own the scooter already, you can find all sorts of fun accessories. Everything from the factory accessories such as top case, large windscreen, fly screen, rubber floor mat, side stand, and more, and then aftermarket quality Italian accessories from Faco, like the fly screen from Faco that I'll do a video shortly of. Until next time, it's Robot here. Stay safe, ride safe, and enjoy life.